Here we will see how Einstein calculated the bending of light rays. In particular, for a field producing point mass, m, at the origin of coordinates, we can write a first order approximation of the tensor g mu nu. This tensor must be centrally symmetric, because we only have a point mass at the origin, and we know that g44 can be written as 1 plus 2 phi over c squared for a weak gravitational field. And phi for a point mass is just minus the gravitational constant g times the mass, which is located at the origin, and I will call it capital M, divided by r. So g44 can be written as 1 minus 2gm divided by c squared times 1 over r. And we define this constant here as lowercase a. This is just Einstein's notation. And of course, we can rewrite this as 1 minus a over r. Then, we need to define other components of g mu nu. So, we define g rho sigma, where rho and sigma are, in this case, indices that can take the value 1, 2, or 3. And g rho sigma is equal to minus delta rho sigma. And of course, there must be minus the Kronecker delta here. But we also have a small perturbation of this kind, minus a times x rho x sigma divided by r cubed, where r is the distance from the origin, and if we want to define it in terms of the coordinates, we have r equal to x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x3 squared, like this. And this term here is of the order of 1 over r. This term is written like this also because it preserves radial symmetry, since if we make the transformation x rho to minus x rho, and of course x sigma goes to minus x sigma, the sign of this quantity will be preserved. It will not change. So there is symmetry. And also we set g rho 4 equal to g4 rho, because of symmetry, equal to 0. So from here, from these definitions, Einstein states that it can be easily verified that Jimmy Nu satisfies the field equations. Now let's examine the behavior of light rays. For a light ray, we know that ds squared, the element, the invariant element ds squared, is equal to 0. We know this from the theory of special relativity, since in special relativity we have dx1 squared minus dx2 squared minus dx3 squared plus dx4 squared equal to 0. In the general theory, we have g mu nu dx mu dx nu equal to 0. Now, the magnitude of the velocity of the light ray that we call gamma, this magnitude here, if we measure it in the sense of Euclidean geometry, gamma is defined as the square root of dx1 over dx4 squared plus dx2 over dx4 squared plus dx3 over dx4 squared, like this. And as you can see, this quantity here is a dimensionless velocity, actually, because we divide by dx4 here in the denominator of these velocities. Besides, let's consider this sketch. So I'm going to sketch two wave fronts. This is one wave front which is propagating in some direction. At this point of the wavefront, we have a light ray 
moving with a velocity that we call c2 and the space spanned by this light ray is c2 times the infinitesimal time dt at the point here p1 this light ray will propagate with a different velocity c1 times dt we are assuming that this is due to the gravitational effects and the new wave frontier will be something like this so there will be an angle here phi and also an angle here phi due to the bending of the light ray if we define this direction here n n is perpendicular to the direction of propagation of this wave front you can see that the angle through which the light ray is deflected is approximately given by c1 minus c2 times dt and then we divide by p1 p2 assuming that this length here is quite small and this is equal to minus the change in the velocity c with respect to the direction of the normal n times dt now we want to examine the curvature undergone by a ray of light passing by a mass capital m at the distance capital delta let's say so let's choose the system of coordinates in agreement with the following diagram let me draw the diagram here we have x2 x1 here we have the light ray passing at this point and the distance from the origin is delta and at the origin we have the mass m and this delta is the minimum distance between the light ray and the mass according to the considerations that we have made here the total bending of the light ray is given to a very good approximation by this formula i will call it b just like einstein and it's an integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of the derivative of gamma in this case we have this velocity gamma here the velocity of the light ray it's dimensionless and we take the derivative with respect to x1 and we integrate over x2 which is the direction of motion of the light ray and our aim here is to calculate this b this deflection of the light ray we start from this equation g mu nu dx mu dx nu equal to zero and from here since we are moving since the light ray is moving along x2 it means that dx3 is equal to dx1 which is equal to zero and therefore from this equation we get g44 dx4 squared equal to minus g22 dx2 squared and we also know that gamma is equal to the square root of dx1 over dx4 squared plus dx2 over dx4 squared plus dx2 over dx4 squared and of course since we can set this equal to zero we get dx2 over dx4 which from here you get square root of minus g44 divided by g22 and therefore this is equal to since we know the expression for g44 and g22 we have the square root of 1 minus a over r divided by 1 plus a x2 squared over r cubed and since a over r is small we can approximate this function to the first order if you do the very simple calculation you get 1 plus a over r times the derivative of this function here calculated at 
a over r equal to zero. So if you do the calculation, you get one half times minus one minus x2 squared over r squared, and this is equal to one minus a over two r times one plus x2 squared divided by r squared. So from here we can calculate d gamma, derivative of gamma with respect to x1, and this is equal to a divided by 2 r squared, derivative of r with respect to x1, plus 3a x2 squared, divided by 2 r to the 4 dr over dx1. And dr over dx1, since we know the expression for r, in this case it is just equal to square root of x1 squared plus x2 squared, you get that dr over dx1 is equal to x1 divided by r. And here you get a over 2 x1 over r cubed plus 3a over 2 x2 squared x1 over r to the 5. And now, since x1 is approximately equal to delta during the motion of the light ray, because the bending of the light ray is small, we can replace here, instead of x1, we can put delta. Here, here, we can put delta and also inside r, because remember that r has this expression. So we can place delta squared here. Therefore, we have to calculate b, and b can be calculated like this. We have a over 2 delta, integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, dx over delta squared plus x squared to the power 3 halves plus 3a over 2 delta integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of x squared divided by delta squared plus x squared to the power 5 over 2 dx. Let's calculate this integral here. It's quite simple. We will do a substitution. The substitution is x equal to delta tangent of xi. And when we substitute, we get integral from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. 1 over this denominator here, after this substitution, can be written as delta cubed times 1 over cosine cubed xi times the differential of x, which as a function of xi becomes delta over cosine squared xi d xi. And this is equal to 1 over delta squared integral from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 cosine of xi d xi. And this yields just 2 divided by delta squared. And we can use the same substitution also for this integral here. Let's calculate it below. We have integral from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. And we get delta squared tangent squared xi divided by delta to the power 5 cosine to the power 5 of xi times delta over cosine squared xi d xi. And this is equal to 1 over delta squared integral from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 sine squared xi cosine of xi d xi. And this is just equal to 1 over delta squared. And then here we have sine cubed of xi divided by 3 
to be evaluated between minus pi halves and pi halves. And this just gives me 1 over delta squared times 2 thirds. And if you put the results together, we get b equal to 2a over delta, which is exactly the result that we wanted, namely the deflection of a light ray as described by general relativity.